we're gonna start with reversals. We were just passing, head and arm clamping. Pretty simple. We've gotten into position like this. It's not normal to just start like this. So a lot of times it starts from here. You got your hands inside here. Your first reaction is to just bring yourself supine underneath him. So his hands touch the mat. That's all you want to do. So as you pull in, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. I would love to clamp onto one shoulder. That can't happen that easily. So I'm going to ask you to do two things at this point. You're only going to float out one leg. So one leg's going to extend, one leg is going to stay high. So what you're going to see is this, okay? The second thing I want you to do is, when your hands are like this, and I take him out, let's pay attention to this hand. His hand's just touched. So when I float out this way, my hand blocks his face. Because I have to take this bottom hand and pull it out. And I don't want him leaving me, right? So, and I don't want him coming back until I get my hand out, okay? We're going to give the person the reaction that we come back because it's very difficult to reverse somebody here. So you might say to me, why would he come back? Because if he doesn't, I never retracted this leg and it was at your hip. So I'm going to start taking this arm and breaking it. So you better come back and save it. You almost never see arm bars anymore in the UFC because years ago when hoisted them, He'd isolate an arm and a guy would try to run away and try to pull his arm out and it made it worse. And now you realize you don't run away. You come and save your arm. So his reaction at this point is to come and save his arm. And that's when the reversal happens. Don't force anything. I don't try to reverse a man when he's sitting that far out. And now I'm going to call, I'm going to call out the bottom player. If you don't come back for him, he'll never understand the reshift of weight. Right? So you're going to lay there like this. And I'll see it. Uh, somebody out there, and I'm sorry, I don't want to hold any punch. Somebody out there literally is thinking about something else. And when the round starts, their partner was focused and wanted to maximize their time here. That's what they wanted to do. Right? And you're like this. And he's like waiting for you. And then he feels uncomfortable telling you. And he's doing the, uh, and you just fall over. And now this is, and then you know what I feel like over there? I feel like telling you some curse words and a bunch of different things. That's how I feel. I feel like, really, dude? Like, you didn't really care about your partner? You don't want to make him feel like what's going on? Li- you came here at 6.30 in the morning, do drilling, get up, and you're going to start the day, and you're going to kill yourself. Like, And you don't want, like, there's a saying, right? Do what others won't so you can do what others can't. And that's the truth. It's like, if you're willing to drill and you're willing to be or detailed and and be passionate about the sport, you will be able to submit people that others can't, right? So the saying holds true across the board in everything you do, right? So don't let me see you lay there like a dead duck because that's not real. Yeah, that's the truth, right? right? So you came like this, you shot your hands in, and I pull myself there and I fall in like this, right? So my first reaction, I had two. I'm only taking one leg out, And I'm dropping this hand in front of his face because I want to isolate this shoulder. And I want to break this shoulder, break this arm, or start isolating this arm and start taking it from him. But he's going to drive back. And that's when my isolation comes over the top. I am bringing him over with two things at this point. This elevator and this jamming into his throat. I'm going to give you one last detail. I know it, it feels like you should have this thing up in the air. Do not. This, the front of his deltoid is glued to my chest. I never let spacing because spacing will create the rotation of the shoulder and I could potentially lose it. So when I bring Ethan over, there will never be separation on this point. Okay. So the, the angles were this, they were crosses. I took him out in a cross to isolate this limb. He comes back to save the limb. He should get thrown over my left shoulder depend what side you do it. I'm going to ask you to do both, okay? So you should be able to do the certain things. You don't have to do both. You don't need triangles. Um, you can do a lot of other things. Like there's other things if you're not a big person, you don't have good rotation. Absolutely, a lot of things you could do. But on this, will you have what you have, right? Sometimes they might try to pass you left side. They might try to pass. You'll be able to isolate shoulders right away. So your hands are underneath, right? A couple of small details. Your hands were here and your head's nice and tight to him. And he's trying to get away from you, trying to pass you. And I realized 
man, he's trying to flare on me. He's trying to, and I'm like this. Okay, perfect. Right now, this is exactly what I meant by it before. It would, right now, most of his body's this way. My isolation should go that way. If his body was more this way, my isolation should go that way. It was a perfect example right now of how he ended up when I pulled him up. I can't pick. He was like this. So let me take him out that way. Most of his body weight's this way. One leg came up, other leg stayed high because I wanted to take this arm. And I'm trying to block him to pull my hand out so I can start rotating the shoulder and start hiking this guy up so that I can turn over the top on him. But he comes back right away. And I pair my hands up and I come right over. Right? So simple. Left and right, bottom player. I just had a big speech about that. Don't play dead duck on him. Like, let him feel the movement. Because if a big guy and you're a little guy, you got to start playing that shift over and over. Like, you're going to get stuck. You might bring him to this point. You're floating him out. And you're like, he's driving up. And you go, oh, shit, I can't get him out. I, he's not coming over high. He's keeping his head low. Okay, so now you're coming out again. Right? And now you start realize, like, I'm about to take this leg out and throw it over the top. And you drive forward on me again. And I go, okay, now we're going over. Right? So I may have to float you left and right. The manipulator of balance, like, you know, Johnny used to do it so well. It's like, man, it didn't matter what size you were. He was just going to float you left and right. Left. But now you think that you can't beat a big man. Yeah, you can't beat a big man because you don't know how to manipulate weight. And sometimes when um, there's different levels of the young men that are, like, coming up. And I'll say, he hasn't learned how to deal with strength yet, right? And that's a key thing, like, learning how to deal with strength. How do you deal with strength? People go, I don't understand. Like, how would... He's stronger than me. No, you just don't know how to deal with strength. You don't know how to manipulate movement. And that's what, it's, what's what I mean by it. It's like I'm learning how to manipulate body weight, body weight, body weight. I'm not taking the body weight like this. I'm just throwing it over shoulders. I'm pulling it out left and right. And now you can be 140 pounds, and this guy comes in all 220 and jacked, and he's like all freaking tatted up, and you go, man, I'm going to treat you like a puppy. And that's the goal, right? It's like that's what makes BJJ so beautiful that – you can just manipulate these guys that are double your size or outweigh you by 100 pounds. So that's the goal, okay? Let's part of them start. Whatever, Ferrari, it's like, what's good is a Ferrari if you're driving 100 miles an hour, right? And you're trying to watch the navigation. Like, you're just going to crash. Like, you're not being anybody, right? So I tease you, but it's true, right? I'm like this. And if I don't have a pattern, exactly. exactly. So if you start thinking that you're going to take this hand out, Put it here and then flip. Man, just forget about it. It's not even going to work. It's never going to work. Right? You're like this. And if I don't learn from this point, that's not the, the sequence I told you. And if you want to have a discussion mechanically about it, let's discuss it. That person already flew past you already. Gary Tonin literally jumped over his back and is like coming back. And then when you get guillotined because you turn and you go, man, what I don't they call me to get yeah I know what you think was gonna happen yeah you just came like this and then you pull him out like this and he's already Gordon Ryan's already flew past you over and that, that's not what I did like the moment I pulled him back I floated him and go right away so I had an isolation I'm like this I just landed I'm like okay you're out but I didn't put my hands together first if I put my hands together first at this point like this He's already gone. I mean, Gordon Ryan and Johnny already have a whole DVD on this series. Now back up. And there you go. Oh, man, I got passed. Yeah, I know you got passed. Like, you just did everything wrong. You should get passed. And I would be mad at him if he didn't pass. Like, so pay attention to the steps. The steps aren't just I give you steps and you put them any way you want. It's not how it works. Okay. Remember what I said. Do what others won't so you can do what others can't. Right. And how you do anything in life is how you do everything. You mirror those patterns here. They mirror outside of this place. I guarantee it, man. I guarantee it. I walk the walk. I talk the talk. I do that. OK, so I'm pushy with things because I'm passionate about this sport. If I give you my heart and soul to it, I'm expecting you to give it back to me. Otherwise, just come. I told you all the time. Come anytime you want. You can come late. You can leave early. Yeah, but I won't really pay attention to you because you don't pay attention to me. Right. So let's do it right like this. And now you floated this man out like this. And I'm telling you to drop this guy high and low and tight. And everybody's focused on putting their hands together and throwing them back. 
that just was a byproduct of him coming back. Like, so if I had vision behind this and I went like this, and now this hand is as low as possible because I want to hike this shoulder so that I don't lose the rotation of the, of the elbow, okay? And I'm like this, blocking him. This hand, you're so focused on putting these hands together, you lose this elbow every time, every time. And I'm like this, I'm here blocking his face because I want to push his skull away that maybe I take this leg out and now I throw this triangle up really quick on him, right? I also potentially, I'm like this, blocking him because I don't know where he's going and I'm taking this hand to see if I can grab onto this elbow to pull it down this way. Because if I can make the elbow face that way, he can't come back this way. If you understand the mechanics of the shoulder, it will control the whole body. So I'm here blocking to see if I can take this hand and cup this elbow so I can release this hand to height this elbow. And now he's stuck. And I have one free hand to go, bah, whatever you want to do. I want to push him out. I want to take my legs out. I want to kick this bottom heel out so I can spin this over the top to break it on the other side. But you're so focused, not everybody, but you're so focused on putting your hands together, putting your hands together. And then you wonder why you lose the elbow every time, why you never adopted the move, why you can't break anybody's structure down, why you can't reverse anybody. But hand over the top. When a hand comes over the top, the shoulder goes. Because later on, if you had vision of where this potentially could go, I'm not forcing anything. He's doing everything. Only thing I started with was this. That's it. I didn't start with anything else. And I'm like this. I just made him land and I went and rock. And I'm here trying my best to hike this because if I can bite this or potentially I just get underneath the elbow with a Y wedge, Ethan will tell you, I won't let him go. He's stuck. And he's stuck because of my head. I got this. I'm so far underneath his elbow line with my thumb that I won't let him go. And now he can only run away but I'm not going to let him run away. I'm going to kick out his bottom leg and turn this over the top or potentially flip it to a, from a plata. And if I get my leg out, I'll kick this far side shoulder out so I can spin to the backside on that heel. But you're so focused on putting your hands together. That's not, and then people go, what makes Gordon Ryan so great? Because he is, man. Because he's been ingrained to be very detailed in every single thing. And you think it's chaos. It's not chaos, man. Like, he picks those men apart. They're like puppies. This guy's like, he freaking goes his arm bar, and he had his DVD ready to be released the next day on how to do arm bars. You think that's by accident? No way. Was it by accident? The guy, like, the guy's amazing. He's real. But it's not by accident because he's not the most athletic guy. So what is it then? It, it's detail, right? So... When you come down, you float them out, turn it over the top. I should be pinching this guy so tight. And then I don't know what he's going to do, but I'm telling you what I'm going to feed you the move. He's coming back. So I already took my hand out because I was going to try maybe hit a triangle. I was maybe going to kick out that bottom leg. Maybe I was going to take this leg and hit that back shoulder so I can spin to the legs. I don't know. But now you came back and I went ah, over the top that way. Okay. So drive it back. Be detailed, understand some vision of where I don't, I don't, I don't control this. You control what the submission is. I don't want to impose anything, right? So let's partner up about five more minutes. And then I want to do just a quick ceremony because some people leave early. Um, and then we'll get started with the rolling. Let's do it, guys.